Hey folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. We're going to discuss this documentary, The Toxic Puzzle. Uh, the Toxic Puzzle, a documentary that came out. i got to say first up front, this is about the boringest documentary I may have seen in my entire life. It really just drags on and on and on. It's narrated by Harrison Ford, and um, it, it literally is not really very well written or anything, so I'm not knocking that aspect of it. It's just this, this is a really boring documentary. And they could have given you this information in like 10 minutes. But at any rate, they have a story to tell. And they're trying to, you know, show you this link between blue-green algae and what they call cyanobacteria, uh, which, of course, spirulina is one. And I've discussed that before. And there, there are many types of cyanobacteria. But the two most well-known ones are AFA, Afanas monflas aqua, and spirulina plantensis. Both of them are cyanobacteria or blue bacteria. The whole point of this documentary is to show the link between a toxin found in blue green algae, which are cyanobacteria, uh, in a toxin in there called BMAA, and uh, ALS, or, or Lou Gehrig's disease. So BMAA is beta methylamino aniline, LL aniline, so it's an amino acid. It's only found in this, it's found in a lot of different foods as they find out in this documentary. And they're on to something. There's no different about it. This is like the puzzle piece. And they're showing this link between that and then ALS, which is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Basically, your, your muscles don't get any nutrients and you just sort of atrophy. So you can think very well and uh, it doesn't attack the brain. Uh, that we know of, although there's links to that with uh, Alzheimer's and other dementia-related diseases. So it's more, really more of a, a, a neurological disease. And um, I definitely have something to say about neurological diseases and, and what we can do for them. And avoiding uh, certain types of blue-green algae definitely should be some of them. It's interesting who they, what you know, which algae or which cyanobacteria they actually point the finger at in this in this documentary, because that's the point that that really is just amazing to me that uh, they get to the end of this thing and they point the finger at a blue-green algae called spirulina. Well, that's what I sell. And then they ignore something, climate blue-green algae, um, which is AFA, Afanas monflas aqua. They don't even mention that, and that's out in the market. Hmm, I, I, don't, I can't figure that part out. But we'll get into that. Let's just discuss how they came up with this and, and uh, this idea about the BMAA and how we test for it and uh, how a lot of other companies don't. Bo Landon is someone who's in the movie. He's one of the main, he's the producer. I think he's the director. Uh, you know, Marion Landon is another one. And then Paul Allen Cox is the scientist. These are the main three people. They tell us, you know, things like drink clean water, don't drink green water. Okay, I don't know who's <laughs> drinking green water. But one of the people, a, a woman, uh, her name is Ellie O'Connell. I guess she passed away. Um, before this documentary was released around that time, she had ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, or this wasting away of, of muscle tissue. And um, there's been a lot of studies about this. I'm going to bring up these studies here in just a minute. And they, they definitely show, show links to BMAA, which is found in a lot of algae, and not in spirulina, by the way, although they claim that it is. Um, but she has this, and, uh, you know, so she takes something that's called another amino acid, called l -serine. Uh, one of my formulas, uh, my Focus 500 formula, for instance, has phosphate serine in it. Um, so it's another kind of an offshoot of, of, of this amino acid, uh, L-serine. So she shows tremendous improvement when she starts taking this. Uh, one of her great quotes in this, and she's just a, a sick woman who knows nothing about health and knows nothing about natural health or, you know, or, or medicine or anything. So she's at the hands of the doctors, and she's very, very sick. But she says, you know what, nature can cause a disease, but also in nature there is a cure for disease. Now, that, that's very true. She's really, she's really hit upon something. Here's a woman who really doesn't know anything about health, doesn't know anything about medicine, and she says, you know, nature can make you sick. Yeah, I mean, you, you get some, you know, nature is full of toxins, okay? This is what I'm always talking about, detoxification, getting the things in your, out, out of your body that don't belong there. That's what a toxin is. And BMAA is a very serious one. And they have shown repeatedly how people got this, you know, this dementia, Parkinson's disease, and all these neurological diseases from being exposed to BMAA. So uh, this, is that, this is all very useful information. Uh, we're going to run into a brick wall. 
<laughs> at the end of this documentary, I, I will just say that she goes into the hospital, she takes this l which is an amino acid, she starts doing really, really well and on this stuff before she goes in, and then she starts getting really, really sick. They have to take her to the hospital. Well, they immediately take her off l and why do they do that? Well, it's not a registered drug. So let's be clear about something. When, you, when you're at the hands of the medical industry, at the doctors, they've got you. They're only going to give you prescribed drugs. And if phosphatidylserine is not on that list, because that's, that's something that's really good for the brain, helps with concentration, amazing, or l is not on the list, well, you're not getting it. Okay? And now they're studying it to see if they can't get it on the list. Well, it's too late for her. You know, and I would say this is this is just one thing that could have helped her and would was helping her, okay? And there was many others because, again, she made the statement, and it's very, very true. You know, nature can make you sick, and then there's a cure out there for nature, and that's my whole point. So kudos to her for saying that. One of the comments that was made by, you know, the hospital, we, this is a food supplement and we will not tolerate food supplements. Well, you know, that's, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty dogmatic, isn't it? So they, they kind of took her by the hand and, and got her into the hospital, and, and now she's no longer with us. And isn't that pretty common of the medical establishment? I think, it, I think it's, it happens quite a lot. The main thing what they're showing in this documentary is that when you have an algae bloom, and they have this around, you know, Lake Erie, we have, you know, I'm in Michigan, so we have these toxic blooms, um, uh, uh, algae blooms of this toxic algae, which is AFA, Afanis Monflas Aqua. And quite frankly, they never mention the name of this algae uh, in the documentary. AFA, Afanismon Flas Aqua. That's what comes out of Klamath Lake, Afanismon Flas Aqua. You know, they keep showing that when they have these algae blooms, then people start dying or they start getting ALS or they live next to the coast and they, they get ALS. Um, you know, it's in the fish, it's in seafood, it's in clams, it's in all sorts of, I mean, this stuff can grow in, even in the ocean. So it's in the fish. So, so one of the things they never tell you, it's don't just watch out for the algae, the algae, the algae. They go after spirulina. They don't ever condemn fish. They don't tell people to stop eating fish. Well, we wouldn't want to do that. That, would, that might, that might uh, go against the fish industry. But the spirulina industry, uh, one of the two most powerful foods in the world, we're going to attack you. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll do that. How about this thing up here in AFA, Fondesmont Flas Aqua, in, in Klamath Lake? No mention of it whatsoever. So very strange. I don't, again, I, always, I almost wonder, was there a, some other kind of agenda, some hidden agenda here that I didn't see? So it's this conflating of these algae, these, you know, saying all cyanobacteria, because this is the suggestion in this documentary, all cyan, cyanobacteria are dangerous. So if it's spirulina, which is, that's the one they mentioned, spirulina platensis. So I looked up several studies myself in Pub, PubMed. There's some other resources as well. And really, quite frankly, there's not a lot of studies um, talking about spirulina and BMAA. It talks about blue-green algae in a few of them. Here's one uh, analysis of BMMA and spirulina-containing supplements. Okay, let's zoom in on the conclusion. BMAA was not detected at low limits of detection in any of the product samples. Do they mention this in this documentary? Toxic puzzle? No. Now, I've been selling spirulina for many, many years, and, uh, you know, here's, uh, for example, here's one of our test reports. This comes from Perry EDI, Indian spirulina, some of the best spirulina in the world. And you'll notice that here's the report, and then, of course, here it is, uh, non-detected, BMAA. So uh, there's another one called microcystins. You know, we run, that's very similar. Um, so again, this is, you know, these are, these are cyanobac cyanotoxins, okay, you know, cyanoblue toxins. They come out of a, a cyanobacteria, a blue -green, what is it called, blue-green algae. So it's really not an algae. You know, we've discussed this before. It's really technically not an al algae. It's a cyanobacteria. It's kind of half animal, half, half, uh, half plant. So very interesting. And again, I take spirulina every day, and I've been taking it for 20, 20 years plus now. So, and I've taken all sorts of different types. But you look in here, and we, we don't, we don't, we test for these constantly. And that's the point I want to make here, because at the end of this documentary, they really they go out of their way for whatever reason to really attack spirulina. This is spirulina juice. As 
Spirulina is the commercial name for a group of cyanobacteria. Mr. Landon, that's not the commercial name, that's the scientific name, Spirulina plantensis or Arthrospiria plantensis, either one will do. It's not the commercial name for a group of, 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 of cyanobacteria, but for a single species. Of, of cyanobacteria, which we call Spirulina plantensis. So you better get your facts straight if you're going to start attacking a, a, a species of algae. Yes, cyanobacteria, the same stuff that we have been looking at in Lake Erie, along the Florida coast, the Baltic Sea, and all the other places we visited for this film project. Oh really? Uh, you found this species, Spirulina plantensis? When you looked all over the world in the Baltic Sea and Lake Erie, and uh, I, I hear no mention of Klamath Lake, uh, Oregon. I don't know why. We'll get into that in a second. But this is the species you found? You know what? I'm going to challenge you on that. I'm going to say this is not the species you, you, you found. Now, this is a cyanobacteria. There's no, there's no doubt. But this is the species you found? This was in your test tubes? This is when you went out into the desert there and you found it in Saudi Arabia? Really? Okay, I would like to see some kind of evidence for that because I don't believe this is the species, Spirulina platensis, of cyanobacteria that's toxic that you found. The weird thing is that there is no testing of commercial products looking for the BMAA before this hits the shelves in the food stores. Now the weird thing is, is that you keep talking about Spirulina plantensis and you don't talk about Aphanismon flas aqua, um, which is known to have uh, cyanotoxins, or any of the other uh, cyanobacteria that do have cyanotoxins in them. You just keep talking about Spirulina plantensis and quite frankly, it's the only one that actually has test results. Here's mine. I showed you earlier. These are the ones. I, I have more if you want them. We test, we test for BMAA all the time. We test for microcystins all the time batch after batch and and you're saying that this this is not tested well that, this is just misinformation now searching the internet i will find spirulina in all forms such as juice powder gel caps and tablets well i'm here and i'm i'm searching the internet too and i don't see any spirulina juice i see live culture being sold okay that's different that's not juice um, I see spirulina in a lot of products that you can make into a, a smoothie or into a juice, and I don't see any gel caps. I have never seen any spirulina ever sold in a gel cap. I've seen it sold in, in powder form, in tablets, and I've seen it sold in capsules, but not gel caps. But scientists in Canada have now presented breakthrough information about the toxic BMA8 in spirulina products, because what they have found is a call to action. They conclude, not all spirulina products tested positive for BMAA, but raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina all tested positive for BMAA. So maybe this glass of spirulina juice doesn't contain toxic material, but another product will. I have no way of... Okay, I hold in my hands that exact same study here, the one he's citing. From these Canadian researchers. Very interesting little thing here. Here's the last page. Now there it comes up and you know he's highlighting here and it's right at the bottom. This last part right here though is not anywhere to be found in here. The, the raw unprocessed spirulina uh, samples he's talked about is not in this study. I'm just going to go ahead and say he's making that part up. He's making it up because I don't see, I don't see it in the study. But raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina all tested positive for BMAA. I don't see it anywhere in there. Now maybe I'm maybe it's somewhere else. It's another study. He didn't talk about another study. And I mean I've looked through the entire study. It's not that many pages. It's only seven or eight pages here. I read the whole thing. Um, you know, it talks about spirulina. It talks about the samples does not say anything about raw, unprocessed spirulina having BMAA uh, residuals in all of the raw, those samples. Not, not once. So something's going on here. There's something a little fishy with this documentary and the fact at the end here, this guy has come up, he's found a study, and uh, you know what he's highlighting there at the very end, this part, is not even in the study. But raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina all tested positive for BMAA. So their conclusion is a lie. 
it's a lie. Now, you know, I'm one of these guys, look, you, you proved me to be wrong, and I'll retract that statement gladly on a YouTube video and in a blog. But for now, I think that he's lying because, honestly, folks, I have never found any sample of spirulina that contains BMAA ever and I've been doing this 20 years. Scientists in Canada have now presented breakthrough information about the toxic BMAA in spirulina products. I don't know why it's breakthrough information here. Uh, if the breakthrough is let's take all the spirulina off the market or let's ruin uh, the spirulina marketing efforts of companies like myself. I, I don't know what the breakthrough is and it's a call to action. Really, in that paper is a call to action. So scientific uh, papers now are a call to action. And maybe you think it's a call to action. Here's another call to action. Why don't we start testing Klamath Lake algae? How about that call to action? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have a call to action right now. AFA, Aphanus monflas aqua, that's the, uh, that's the cyanobacteria that's full of uh, uh, saxitoxins and anatoxins and maybe some other toxins up, taken out of Klamath Lake. There's several companies up there doing it. They, they, and by the way, one of them sells in gel caps. Maybe that way, that's where you got it from? No, maybe not. But let's call that, that's a call to action, and we're going to go out and make sure that they all get tested for BMAA. If you really want to do something here, start, you know, start asking companies that you buy spirulina from, like myself and any other company out there. there there's, a, there's a lot of them. I'm not going to start naming them all. What's the difference? Ask them for their BMA, BMAA test. Okay? I mean, that's legitimate. See, see when you ask me for, for it, I just shoot it over to you. I just email it or, you know, we, we post it on our website from time to time. It's in my blogs. I put it there. It'll be in this blog. I think there's a link between BMAA and, and ALS. I agree. I, I have no problem with that. I just don't understand why you're t attacking spirulina. The, the one cyanobacteria we know is clean. The one cyanobacteria we know is o almost always free of BMAA. And then the last thing I just want to say here is, all the raw, un unprocessed spirulina had BMAA levels in it. What were the levels, and what does raw and unprocessed mean exactly? But the raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina all tested positive for BMAA. Because you don't find raw, unprocessed, whatever that means, spirulina on the market. I mean, I don't know what unprocessed means. Uh, maybe you could explain it to me. But the raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina. We, we take the spirulina and we harvest it off and, and we spray dry it. It's, we don't expose it to high temperatures or anything like that. And, and, and then it's turned into powder. And from powder, it's turned into tablets. That, that's, the, that's the whole process. So r raw, unprocessed spirulina is full of BMMA. This is quite an accusation. It's a charge, and it really is, to me, just throwing mud against the, the wall. Because, you know, this one study, here we go with the one study again, comes out with something like that. And, you know, all the samples we, you know, we tested. Can I see those samples? Can I see all the test results of those? I've, I've got the study. I don't see it in the study. I'll say it one more time. I do not have any problem with you asking for MMAA testing, test results. You should. But why isn't Klamath Lake in this? Why isn't Klamath Lake algae, AFA, a finest monflas aqua, that's known to have antitoxin A, saxitoxins, why are they left out of this documentary? So you went a long way here, all the way through this incredibly boring documentary, I, ha I hate to say. Oh, yeah. It's it's worth it's a it's worthwhile making this documentary because if there's a if there's a link between this amino acid uh, BMAA and ALS uh, this this wasting away of muscle tissue we should know about it we should be on the lookout for this kind of stuff you know to once again say hey it's in spirulina too well it's not on my spirulina and I've never seen it in any spirulina is it stuff coming from China. Is that what, is that these raw, unprocessed samples that you tested? But the raw material samples of unprocessed spirulina all tested positive for BMAA. Was it, were they from China? Well, we don't know. We don't know. All we're left with is, watch out for that spirulina. I've got spirulina juice here. This is spirulina juice. We don't know. You're playing Russian roulette. I have no, I have no way of testing it. You know, it's, it really, to me, took a really good documentary, a boring documentary, 
but but a, you know, well-meaning documentary. And to me, it, honestly, at the end, kind of ruined it, it <laughs> because it, it it didn't say ask for testing and what about AFA? What about Klamath Lake algae? All it said was spirulina dangerous. Better avoid it. You know what I've always said for years and years about AFA and Klamath Lake algae. I said if that if that species is so special and so great, why don't you cultivate it in a controlled environment instead of taking it out of a lake? Because, you know, you get a bunch of other species in there, right? And I don't care, no matter what you do, not to mention, again, you're taking out of a lake. What do you think, that's a clean lake? It's not a clean lake. Go up there, it's a recreational lake. There's boats running around up there. There's farmland right near it. It's surrounded by farmland. There's farm runoff. And it's it's the phosphates in the, in, in, in the fertilizers that give you the algae blooms. And they wait for the next algae bloom and they go out and harvest. Is that why they don't want to do it? Because they would actually cost money to set up a facility to grow it the way we have to grow spirulina? Is that why they don't do it up in Klamath Lake? Because I've said for years, and in fact I have railed for years against this stuff, and I've said for years it's dangerous and it's toxic. And there's not one nutrient in AFA, a Plus Aqua, that you won't find in spirulina. But spirulina doesn't have these toxins, and spirulina is grown in a controlled environment, under under you know careful conditions, and it's monitored closely as, as closely as any other species of algae on the planet, other than chlorella. You know, you, uh, you look at look at the amount of of nutrients that we have in this, the amount of tests that, that were made to do on this, heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, plastics, um, full plastics run, uh, BMAA, uh, cyanotoxins, theophobides. I mean, the list goes on of all the tests. You will not find any food on the planet that is tested like this. You go down to your supermarket, broccoli? No, there's no, there's no test results. There's no heavy metals. Uh, garlic? Um, uh, cauliflower, we could go on. Corn, is corn tested? Uh, for, is corn tested for pesticides and herbicides? And the answer to all the, those questions are no. Is any of them tested for radiation? No, none of them are. We get asked for radiation tests all the time. I mean, how could radiation be getting into our product and not be getting into every other food on the planet? <laughs> you know, highly scrutinized and again, you know, and you know, maybe AFA has got these test results too. I, you know, I can't seem to go call up your company, whoever you get your AFA, a Fonzman Floss Aqua. So call them right now and say, could you send me your BMAA testing, your microcystins test results, and see if they have it. See if they come up with that test result. This is very, very carefully, you know, scrutinized foods, very heavily tested, and you're you're kind of again just kind of throwing. You're really casting aspersions on them. They're one of the two most powerful foods in the world, and I appreciate your documentary until you single out one species. It's the only species you mention in this entire documentary is Spirulina plantensis. And by the way, it's the scientific name, not the commercial name. A spirulina is the commercial name for a group of cyanobacteria. And it's the only one you mention, and then you say, hey, better be careful. Better watch out over here. Don't swim in this water. Okay, good. Don't. How about AFA? I mean, how about Klamath Lake? Should you swim in that water? Oh, no, no, no mention of that. No mention of not swimming in that water. Why not? So these are the questions I have. And you know what? Maybe maybe uh, the, the producers and maybe Harrison Ford will contact me. How dare you, sir? He did the voiceover for this. Maybe I'll be contacted by the producers and say, oh, we have more information. We have more information. Because... To do something like this, once again, to spirulina, just is wrong and it is misleading. And you did a great disservice to one of the two great foods on the planet and one of the only two foods you can live on exclusively and still be healthy. I stand behind it. I've been selling it and I've been eating it for 20 years. No ALS here. So don't confuse people and don't mislead them. I'm Dr. Bob McCauley. I'll see you next time.